right. Hey guys, how's it going? Oh, you're super nice. Lovely. Uh, yeah, my name's Ben. It's lovely to be here. Uh, I normally get my... Oh, thank you. Uh, I normally get uh, my set started by getting everyone to do a Mexican wave. Uh, that's right, it's happening. Um, so, starting over here, we're gonna go all the way over there. Uh, if you've got drinks, put them down, because otherwise they get soggy at the back. Um, uh, if you don't know what a Mexican wave is, it's not what uh, Trump's trying to stop. Um, and so, uh, <laughs> um, after three, here we go, this is genuinely happening, sir. Um, so, uh, uh, you look very unsure, but I'm doubling down. After three, are we ready? Three, two, one. We're having fun. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to talk about the ten people who whooped and cheered during that. Um, a lot of you are doing that in silence, um, <laughs> which is spooky as shit. Um, <laughs> just a lot of people in the dark are just being like, ooh. <laughs> so, um, uh, so it's lovely to be here with you, Nazis. Um, um, Heil. Um, uh, my. Um, uh, we're also in a bunker downstairs, so it's quite weird, isn't it? Um, I, <laughs> um, uh, uh, yeah, my name's Ben. It's super nice to be here with you guys. Uh, my name is Ben Pope. Uh, ben is actually short for Benedict, so my full name is Benedict Pope. Um, <laughs> yes, which is not a joke. That is my actual human name. That's what's on my birth certificate. Not a good name for a lot of reasons. I'll never be the most famous Benedict. There's some enormous Benedicts, Pope, Cumberbatch, eggs. Um, right. <laughs> Just a middle class one for Brighton. Um, uh, and also, like, if you're being nerdy about it, if you translate Benedict from Latin, uh, it means blessed. So it's like a very ancient religious name. It's probably the most Catholic name you could possibly have. I don't think there's a more Catholic name than Benedict. Yes, there is. Pope. Um, <laughs> just ram those two together. Most Catholic name I could possibly have. I might as well be called Chastity McAlterboy. Like, that's <laughs> what we're working with. It's like, hey, I'm Chastity. My wife, Rosary. Yeah. And our son, Shame. Um, <laughs> Short for Seamus. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's very nice to be here, you guys. It's nice to be in Brighton as well. In your month, yeah, it's your month, guys. It's Veganuary. <laughs> you know, it's, we're here. That's the most Brighton month of all, isn't it? <laughs> well, November, but that's um, other, other than that. It's, it's lovely. And Gay Pride, of course, yes, thank you. That was a good fact check, but it's ruined the momentum. Um, I, um, uh, <laughs> just a director's commentary from the front row, lovely. Um, <laughs> No, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> um, what else do I want to tell you about me? Uh, I'm white. Ah. Um, <laughs> just, just very white. When I dance, it looks like dressage. Um, that's, uh, you know, it's bad. Um, <laughs> um, I'm white. I'm 26. Oh, I don't feel it. I feel like two 13-year-old boys taped together. Um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Not like that. Come on, you, you, you pervs. <laughs> Um, uh, yes, uh, not many qualifications as an adult man, really. I uh, have a Duke of Edinburgh award. Um, <laughs> yes, thank you, sarcastic, but I'll take it. I, um, uh, it's gold, ladies. Um, if, uh, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> if anyone doesn't know what a Duke of Edinburgh award is, uh, it's sort of like a knighthood. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a roughly where that is. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh <laughs> Are there any other Duke of Edinburgh award people in the room? Any others? Yes! Losers! All right! I love it. Because, no, the only thing it really, all it means is that you look good at camping, right? That's the only thing. The only thing you learn. You learn how to put up a tent, that's it. The only, you learn very quickly nothing good ever happens in a tent. Just everything you can think of is bad, right? Bad sex, forensic science, murder, circus. Nothing good. Happens in a tent. Yeah. Terrific. Um, uh, I am not, I'm not, I've not been doing Veganuary. I, uh, I've, uh, I've been trying to give some stuff up this year. Uh, I try to give up, I'm trying to give up smoking because uh, I picked it up last year and I need to drop it again. It's, uh, it's, cause it's bad because the reason I've been smoking uh, is because I get quite awkward in like social scenarios. Um, and so I was like, oh, it's great if I can just have something to do with my hands that will distract people. That'll be a nice way of getting around it. But that's a dreadful reason to smart start smoking because it's essentially your brain being like, oh, <laughs> this conversation's not going very well. Well, <laughs> kill yourself. <laughs> Do it slowly. <laughs> and in a French way. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I'm 
trying to lock that down, trying to get rid of that. Um, I'm also trying to be more punctual, that's another thing, because I'm, I'm like a late person, uh, by which I mean I'm, I'm late for stuff, I'm not dead. Um, uh, <laughs> Because it is really when we talk about dead people, and we're like, oh, the late, oh, the late John Smith. And it's like, dude, he's not coming. Um, <laughs> stop checking your Google calendar. He's never coming to brunch again. Um, uh, no, I'm, I'm late for everything. It's really bad. I used to wear a watch to try and deal with that, uh, but it just depressed me. It was just every time I looked at my wrist, it was always bad news. I was, I was never like, oh, it was always like, ah, fuck, just every time. I might as well just had a wristband that said, run, <laughs> you know. Um, a Fitbit, I guess. Um, uh, that's what you call that. That's what a watch is, isn't it? It's like pedantic jewelry, isn't it? It's a sort of, a sort of you know, anal bracelet for something else. But <laughs> um, um, <laughs> Come on, pervs, I know you there. It's fine. <laughs> um, no, I am. I'm just late for everything. Like, I've never seen trailers on the big screen. Like, that's never happened. Like every time I go to the cinema, there's like a 20 minute buffer zone, right? I just use that, I use that excuse in the rest of my life now. People are like, oh Ben, you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna be late. I'm like, don't worry, there's 20 minutes of trailers. And they're like, Ben, it's a funeral. There's not, uh, there's no trailers at the funeral. <laughs> it's not Granny 2, the scattering. <laughs> That's not <laughs> happening, is it? You know? No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> I'm trying to be trying to be more punctual. That's something I'm trying. I'm also trying to be more. I'm trying to be more tidy. That's something. I'm a real mess. I got this from my, my parents. Occasionally I go back and I uh, visit my parents and I uh, and I, j I freak out a bit because I moved away from them. And it's, uh, I, it's, they're very very together human beings. They're very like um, they're very rounded human beings. My dad like you know he likes the clash and can bleed a radiator. Um, <laughs> you know and uh, I like Spotify and I don't know what blood type radiators are. So. I <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so, so it's just a bad idea to compare about. Like my dad is like amazing. Like he he grew up in the countryside, so he has all those skills. Like he can you know he can hear bird song and he can tell you what bird that is. He's Shazam. He's <laughs> <laughs> he's Spring Watch Shazam. <laughs> he can he, like hear like and he'd be like oh the lower beaked tumble tit. <laughs> I don't know the name of birds. I um I you know. And like he can like drive like a car and like a minibus and stuff. I have a provisional driving license. Still, are there any other provisionals in? Yes. Yeah, it's the same. It's the Duke of Edinburgh people again. It's like, which are, <laughs> just stationary losers. We really, you know, because it's uh, provisional. You'll agree with this. Provisional's the worst thing. There's a proviso. It's provisional. That's it's a big proviso. Because a provisional driving license is a piece of card that says I can drive if I learn to drive, which. <laughs> That's a big if, isn't it? It's a laminated piece of hope that I carry around in my wallet. <laughs> Police officers are like, can you drive? And I'm like, oh, one day. <laughs> it's very melodramatic. Um, yes. No, so I don't, I, don't, I don't stand up compared to my parents. The one way that I do, if I ever compare myself to my parents, is my parents are big hoarders, and I, I'm trying to kick that habit. They just collect stuff all the time, and they're at an age now where they're not collecting it for themselves, they're giving it to me in 10 years. So it's <laughs> too morbid. I, uh, <laughs> I like genuinely, like they own their house, so I assume I'm gonna in, like, inherit their house because that's the only way our generation can buy houses. Um, is because houses don't cost money anymore, they cost relatives, and, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> bit of relatable content there, all right, yeah. <laughs> And it's so, I'm just gonna get all of this shit and it's so annoying because it's, like, I don't, it's not even cool stuff. But like people, I talk to people and they're always like, oh yeah, my, my parents have got oh, just magazines everywhere. And I'm like, that is not, that's not real hoarding. Real hoarding is when you go into your dad's garage and you find a suitcase full of pine cones. <laughs> like, what the fuck is that? Like, what is he trying to kidnap Autumn? Like why, what? You blackmailing a tree, dad. Why is the... <laughs> Give me the money or I'll burn the children. Like, that's not a normal <laughs> response. And I was like, Dad, like, you know, why have you done this? And he was like, well, Mum loves pine cones, so every time, like, you know, I go out for a walk, if I see a pine cone, I take it home and I put it in, you know, in the garage, which is, yes, it's so sweet, isn't it? But it's also creepy. <laughs> being like, oh, I love it in autumn, there I've got a, for a, you know, a suitcase full of pine cones in the garage. That's like being like, oh, I'm a people person because I've got one in the boot. <laughs> that's, uh, I don't trust him. I don't trust him. <laughs> 
Um, but no, they, they passed on a lot of stuff to me. Uh, they're, they're very cautious people. They're more, you know, I, I, I freak out in any kind of tense environment. Um, I, I, I went paintballing recently uh, on a stag do. Um, uh, I d and it wasn't like a, an alpha male stag do. It was very much a beta male stag. We were not <laughs> stags. <laughs> if we were stags, we'd be one of the ones with like one of the antlers dead. You know? <laughs> like one of those. Um, it wasn't a stag do. It wasn't even a stag don't. It was a stag can't. And we... <laughs> You know, <laughs> and we were uh, <laughs> we went paintballing. And if you've not been paintballing, uh, what it is, you go to the woods, which is not a good start, and you uh, simulate a war zone. You simulate killing all your friends, uh, and just before it starts, you simulate a mugging because they make you pay seventy-five pounds to go paintballing. <laughs> it's incredibly expensive. <laughs> And we went, and I didn't really want to go. I was telling my friends, I'm a pacifist, I don't want to go. And uh, they said, we'll pay, and I said, yes. So <laughs> we went, and <laughs> the guy who ran it was this big, like, gung-ho, 24-carat testosterone dude. And he was talking to the group, and he's like, by the way, guys, me and the guys on the team, we're actually on the list of people to get called up to combat if all the army gets wiped out in a war. <laughs> I was like, maybe that's true. <laughs> but I want to see the rest of that list. Because I'm pretty sure it's going to be like the army, the territorial army, the coast guard, lollipop ladies, <laughs> the scouts, the brownies, actual brownies, BT customer service, and then those guys. Like, there's <laughs> no way they're high on that list. Um, but we went, and we went. I was behind this barricade for most of the game, and I, I stood up at one point and I got shot in the head. Which I don't know if you guys know the rules of the game. I don't be melodramatic, but that's a war crime, and I was. No, I was very calm about it. I was just like, ah! And then the guy <laughs> next to me, he's one of the guys who runs the game, he turned to me and went, oh, calm down, mate. It's just paint. <laughs> and at the time, I was like, oh, yeah, no, I'm a wuss. Meh. But what I should have said was like, yeah, it's just paint. But he fired it out of a gun. <laughs> he fired it out of a gun in my head. I don't have a problem with paint. I like paint. I don't have a problem with paint per se. I like the Mona Lisa. I think it's very beautiful. But not if you fire it out of a cannon at my skull. That's a different scenario all of a sudden, isn't it? I wasn't critiquing his artistic choices. I wasn't like, oh, Burgundy, you monster. That, wa <laughs> that wasn't the problem. <laughs> it was the substance. It wasn't how fast it was going. It could have been anything. It could have been tiramisu. But like, that hits you at 80 miles per hour. You're not like, oh, delicious. <laughs> you know, that, I didn't say any of that, which I should have done. What I should have done is uh, kicked him in the balls. <laughs> and then been like, oh, calm down, mate. <laughs> it's just shoes. Um, <laughs> guys, it's been a pleasure. My name is Ben Pope. Have a lovely evening. So that's the end of the second section. Okay, big cheer for them. You saw Ben Pope. Come on. You saw Lulu Popperwell. And you saw Christian Gigard as well. Uh, 15 minutes. Come back for your fantastic headliner. Thank you very much. <laughs>